Hey guys, real quick, I just wanted to show you how we're going to be using Tinkercad to simulate various circuits before we're actually physically in the laboratory to uh, make sure we have our concepts organized correctly and things are making sense. Um, this particular project, for this is called Project Zero for a reason, it's super duper simple, but you're starting to use a bunch of different pieces of tools of all at the same time, and so I I don't want to make the project itself very complicated. So the idea is simply to measure some voltages and use those voltage measurements plus our understanding of the components in the circuit to deduce the current voltage relationship through an unknown an unknown component. So we'll have a component whose resistance we don't know exactly. We're going to make some voltage measurements of the circuit and then from that we're going to make a graph of current versus voltage for that component. Next week we'll be dealing with a more complicated situation with a, a nonlinear um, component and it's and the analysis and how we deal with it will be more complicated but the basic concept of how we're going to get the current data is exactly the same. So that's the main point of this one. So let's so you go into Tinkercad, go ahead and join using the link in the syllabus. Um, make sure you log in with your Google account and um, your Google account of course is your UND account which is a, which is actually a Google account. So I'm going to uh, grab a couple of components here, a resistor and I need a small breadboard and let's see what else have we got here. I need a photoresistor so that's going to be our unknown resistance and uh, okay I need to switch to all components because I need something that's not in the basic set I need a power supply and I'm also going to need a multimeter so that's all the components you're going to need for this one so we can uh, get rid of this uh, I don't maybe we don't need I, I don't even know oh yeah we can boom okay perfect so um, couple of things about the bread if you never used a breadboard before uh, it's a prototyping uh, tool that you can plug components in, in the lab we're going to be using these to stick components in there the legs of the resistor can actually stick right into the breadboard and when the legs of the component are stuck in there they're electrically connected to whatever row or column they're in now there's a difference between some of the rows and columns this top row is all connected horizontally. You can see the green highlight of all the other holes. If I click on a hole, I get a green highlight of all the other holes that are <coughs> already connected inside the breadboard. They're connected together. This row has all these holes connected together. But if I go down here, you'll notice these ones, um, they're connected vertically instead of horizontally. These ones are connected horizontally. These ones are connected vertically. But they're not connected through across this middle point, this middle line here is not connected so we'll find that that's useful later when we get to dual inline packages which are kinds of components that have many legs and you stick them in there and they they uh, they fit into the breadboard very nicely okay so the idea of this experiment is to measure the uh, voltage and current relationship for this unknown component now I have we know it's a photoresistor because we grabbed a photoresistor so that means it's it's a resistive component, which means the voltage and the current are just proportional to one another. But that proportionality depends on the amount of light hitting the thing. It's a photoresistor, which means it's sensitive to light. So its resistance is light dependent. Um, let's go ahead and hook up the circuit. So I, I want to uh, hook up the power supply to the breadboard. I'm going to do it in a particular way. So I'm going to connect the positive terminal of the power supply to the, uh, this bottom row and the negative terminal to the top row. You'll notice they're already labeled plus and minus. To keep my head screwed on I'm going to go ahead and lay and change the color of these wires to red and black so they visually represent the positive and negative terminal of the power supply. And then since I only have one power supply in my circuit, I can take advantage of these bottom horizontal rows by connecting the plus here to the plus down here and the minus here to the minus down here. And now the negative terminal of the power supply is connected to all these holes 
and then it jumps down here and it's also connected to all these holes. So anywhere, if I lay components out on this breadboard and I need to get to power, I, it's a short jump down to these horizontal rails. They distribute the power uh, horizontally throughout the circuit. They're called power supply rails because they sort of look like a, ra you know, a horizontal railroad, I guess, or something. But uh, anyway, so I want the circuit to be the following. I want the power to come, the current to flow out of the positive terminal of the power supply into the one end of the resistor. Let's move this down a row. So I'll go from the positive rail down to this terminal of the resistor. And then I want to come out of this terminal of the resistor. I want to jump down here to this column. And then I want to connect the one terminal of the photoresistor to that guy. So the current's now flowing through this resistor down here into the one leg of the photoresistor. And then it's going to go from the other leg down to ground. So now the path of the current flow is through this resistor, through the photoresistor, down to ground, which of course we know comes back to the negative terminal of the power supply. So this is a series circuit. Uh, with the resistance. It's a 1,000 ohm resistor. You know that because it's brown, black, red, um, which you can look up the color code of a resistor, which you should probably learn this semester because you'll be, um, you'll be needing to deal with a lot of different resistors, and it's nice to be able to just look at them and tell what resistance they are. I'm not going to test you on that, so if you, if, you don't, uh, if you don't memorize them, it's okay, but it's a nice skill to have. Um, Okay, so that's that's basically the circuit. It's quite simple. The thing is, this resistance is unknown, and we want to deduce the current through this resistor. Now, it turns out that um, these power supplies in Tinkercad are magical. They they have a current scale that goes from microamps up to amps, and uh, real power supplies generally don't do that. They have a finite resolution, and you can't get low uh, small current measurements out of them very well um, and so you have to resort to other means and I want to teach you the other means because when we start switching to controlling circuits with microcontrollers the microcontrollers don't have any current uh, measuring capability built in so we need to figure out another way and the other way is to just use Ohm's law so all right so in order to measure the voltage drop across the photoresistor I want to connect a uh, multimeter and I'm going to put one leg of the multimeter is going to connect to the negative terminal of the power supply which is also remember connected to the downstream pin on the photoresistor and then the other uh, pin on the power supply I w or the multimeter I want to connect to the other pin so I'm measuring the voltage here which of course is the same as the voltage here that's I'm measuring the voltage difference between this point, which is the same as this pin, and this point, which is the same as that pin. So this guy is actually measuring the voltage drop across the photoresistor. The voltage drop across the photoresistor plus the voltage drop across the one this currently 1,000 ohm resistor is got to be equal to the voltage of the power supply. So what that means is I can get the voltage drop across the 1,000 ohms by subtracting the voltage of the power supply from the voltage of the voltmeter. So if I run the simulation, <coughs> you'll see that um, I'm getting a very tiny current, a little under 30 microamps, three hundredths of a milliamp. Um, of course, three hundredths of a milliamp times a thousand ohms is three hundredths of a volt. So three hundredths of a volt is how much voltage is going to drop across this one thousand ohm resistor, and that's why this is four point nine seven instead of five because there's a three hundredths of a volt drop across that guy. Now, uh, in Tinkercad, you can adjust the amount of light landing on the photoresistor by dialing this little slider here, and you can see that now I've got um, I've only got two volts, so that means there's there's almost 3 volts drop between 5 volts and 2.19. That 3 volt drop is because I've got now almost 3 milliamps flowing through a 1000 ohm resistor, which works out to be about 3 volts. So um, this should all sort of make sense. The plan for the lab is to 
simply dial the voltage on the power supply here through a series of voltages. I'd say let's get about 10 data points between 0 volts and let's go up to say around 10 volts. So you could go in 1 volt increments, say 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, that'd be fine. And then you want to record the voltage measured by this multimeter and the voltage measured by the power supply and then we're going to use that data to estimate the resistance of this photoresistor, this unknown resistive component. Okay, so that's the basic idea. I hope that makes sense.